Welcome to Spicy Toast Gaming and our Nidley Guide for Path of Champions. If you enjoy the video, like and subscribe, and let's get into it. First, we're going to start off with a brief overview of the champion, discussing their general playstyle so you have a better understanding of the champion and if you want to invest your time and resources into them. First up, we have Ambush, the newest mechanic added to the game and one of the main features of this deck. Whenever you play a Ambush card, you have the option to either play the card as normal or to play it as a 2 cost 2-2, two -two, which you can later transform into the original card. This leads us into the second gameplay pillar of the deck, Transform. Each round, you're going to try to transform your units to achieve powerful buffs and game-ending effects. Next up, we have Recycle. Nidalee is able to consistently transform her units into increasingly powerful cards. So even when you have a weak card on the board, you can recycle that unit into one that will better suit your needs. On to Aggressive. This deck goes for the throat immediately, and you can often end up winning within the first two rounds. Up next, we have Impact. Whenever you transform your units, you are able to grant them impact, which help rewards your aggressive playstyle. And last up, we have Versatile. There's many different ways you can play or build Nidalee, and you often have the tools to deal with most situations. All right, that is it for the overview. Let's hop in game to better explain some of the points we touched on here. All right, in game now, you see we have Nidalee at level 24 with three stars. So she is a four cost unit that has 5-3 and quick attack and ambush too. We'll touch on that in a moment, but her level up condition is I've seen you summon or transform four other allies. When she levels up, she goes to a 6-4 and now gets overwhelm and this effect Nexus Strike transform me back into Nidalee and create a Javelin Toss in hand. Now that Javelin Toss, zero cost slow, deal four to an enemy. If there's no enemies when I'm played, I target the enemy Nexus instead. So getting and generating a decent removal spell or one that can also just chunk down the enemy Nexus, which is quite nice. Now her champion spell is Prowl. Give an ally two power this round. If it is a Shadow in the Brush, give it two two instead. And then since this is a champion spell, it's creating a Nidalee in your deck. So that Shadow in the Brush, what is that? Well, you see right here, two cost two two. This is a unit we were talking about in the overview. So for all ambush cards, instead of playing their full four cost, you can instead just play them for this two cost two two, saving yourself some mana, and then you're generating a ambush card. So here you see this is Nidalee's ambush card, transform Shadow in the Brush into Nidalee. So two cost burst speed. For every unit, you can see they'll tell you how much that spell is gonna cost. For Nidalee here, see ambush two. So normally for Nidalee, you'd still end up spending four mana. For some cards, the ambush will be less and some other cards, the ambush will be more. Important to note though, that since this is a spell, you can then use spell mana for it. And there's a lot of ways in Path of Champions to either have extra spell mana or to reduce down the cost of your spells. So you can actually end up making your units cost decently less. All right, let's go take a look at her star powers now. So first we have Survival of the Fittest. When an ally transform, grant it 1-1 one, one and impact. That is the rank one version of this. If you have this at rank two, so your three star, it then also gets, if it's the first time this round, summon a exact ephemeral copy of it. So you're consistently trying to transform your units and then the first time each round, you're also summoning an ephemeral copy, which is just great for having either another attacker, another blocker, and this can give you a lot of versatility because this could work on Nidalee, but it could also work on one of your followers. It's similar to what LeBlanc has, except this only happens once per round, but it also doesn't have to just be LeBlanc that gets the ephemeral copy. Now for the second star power, we have most dangerous game plus one starting mana. When you gain the attack token, create a clever camouflage in hand. Now this is a very interesting card. So this is one they made just for this deck. One cost burst, pick an allied follower, pick one of three random followers that cost two more to transform it into. So if you have a one cost unit on the board, you pick this and it transforms that one cost unit into a random three cost unit. Now you get to choose from a selection of three which one you want to transform it into. So you do have the ability to try to make the best situation or the best choice for your situation, which is quite nice. And this is that recycle mechanic I was talking about. So even if you play a unit that has really bad stats or isn't that great, you can then transform it into other units, which can really help you out. Now important to note, any keywords that that unit has are lost unless it is that stacking impact from your star power or if it's an item or relic. 
If the card has any items or relics on it, it holds those when they get transformed. So sometimes you might want to take a cheap but bad card that doesn't really fit your game plan, but might have just some really strong items on it, and then play that and then just transform that into a more powerful card, taking those items with you, dramatically increasing the power of whatever card you transformed into. This is a really fun mechanic and helps you out quite a lot, and it also helps you level up your Nidley, because remember her level up condition is I've seen you summon or transform four units. All right, taking a look at the starting deck now. So first we have the Bristle Hog. Oh look, they actually fixed the UI. I didn't notice that in the patch notes, but now it's actually showing when cards have more than one upgrade. That is great, this used to be bugged. But first we have the Bristle Hog. So one cost, one, two with tough and Philosopher's Stone. So when I'm summoned, draw one. But this also has the added effect of once an ally has transformed this game, grant me one, one. So you'll normally be able to get that happening almost immediately. Immediately. Next up, we have the All Terrain Trooper. So, two cost, three, one with that speed wraps, so it has quick attack and ambush zero. When I'm summoned or transform, grant the weakest enemy vulnerable. So, here you see ambush zero. So, instead of just playing him as normal, you can play him as Shadow in the Brush, and then have this zero cost ambush card you can play whenever you want. With most of your ambush units, especially when you have Nidalee on the board, you're wanting to always transform them just so you can contribute more to Nidalee's level up condition. But then also remember from your star powers, whenever you transform a unit, they're getting that one, one and impact. So for units like this, you pretty much always want to be playing it as Shadow in the Brush. One important thing to mention though, you can only have one of these on the board at a time. You can't just be playing a bunch of ambush units you have to constantly be transforming them quite regularly but that normally is not an issue also remember that since this quick attack is from a item this will be carried over into whatever other items you transform him into uh, next up we have the bushwhack trap so two cost landmark when I'm summoned or the first time an ally transforms each round give the weakest enemy vulnerable this round it also has that haunting trophy so enemies have negative one power this is okay the extra vulnerable is quite nice, but normally this is just such a low tempo play that you're not able to really justify this and you're normally playing a unit instead, uh, but it can work out decently well for Nidalee. Up next we have the Aurora Holonautis, so three cost, four, two, with ambush four. When I transform, summon another Aurora Holonautis. This card is great. Now the ambush is a little pricey, but you're essentially paying a little extra mana to summon another entire copy of this card, which can be quite quite nice. This is a great card for leveling up Nidalee since you can play it as Shadow in the Brush and then when you transform it you're generating two other cards. So just playing this card alone will normally level up your Nidalee by itself which is quite nice and this can often really swing the power of the fight in your favor. All right, next up we have the Desert Duel. So three costs low, give an enemy negative two this round. An ally and enemy strike each other and it has the Predict. This card is fine, gives you a bit of removal. It's okay, I don't personally really like it in this deck since we've seen this in several other decks, but it's a decent removal spell. Next we have Merciless Hunter, so three cost six four, fearsome. Play, grant an enemy vulnerable, and has that phage. So this is a decent card. Again, vulnerable is very strong for this deck, so that's a pretty good play effect. And then the phage will carry over whenever you transform this unit. So it overall is just a pretty solid card. Then you see we have Nidley for a four cost, and then we have the Bruiser. So this is normally five cost, goes down to a four cost with that ancient coin. Five, five, strike, create a lucky find in hand. So this, pick a buff from among three to grant an ally. Personally, I don't really like this card. Don't like that it's in the deck. Doesn't really seem to fit at all in my opinion, but it has a decent stat line and the lucky finds can give you some decent buffs. And then to finish it off, we have the Towering Parafont. So six cost, seven, six with that Dragon Tooth, so Fury and Overwhelm also ambush five so you can really surprise the enemy by first having it as this little bush and then you attack once they block it with a smaller unit you then transform it with the ambush into this massive overwhelm unit this is fairly expensive and normally you're not going to have the mana to play this uh, one thing you can do though if it's earlier in the game and you don't have any other units you can choose to just spend the two mana to play this as shadow in the brush and then you can use your transform spell that you're getting from your second star power, the clever camouflage, to transform this follower into a different card. It's a great thing to do if you know you're not gonna be able to get to the five mana to summon the Parafont, but you just need another follower on the board. Overall, Nidalee's deck works quite well together. 
there's a couple cards that I wish weren't added, especially since there's some great cards that could take their place, like the Avenging Vestayan. But overall, the card works out quite well together, and it's a very fun deck to play. Taking a look at Relics now, for the common Relic, the just best one to pick in every situation, essentially, is Lost Chapter, when I'm summoned, refill your spell mana. So I actually would keep using this until you hit level like 13 or 15, where you can then have a rare and a common. I wouldn't even swap this out for a rare once you're able to do that. It's just so strong. The reason this is so strong, you can play Nidalee turn one for that two cost bush. So you play it as Shadow in the Brush, your Lost Chapter then goes off, refilling your spell mana, and you can then immediately play her Ambush, to summon her onto the board round one. This is an incredibly strong effect. And if you have her at three stars, remember you're also summoning a ephemeral copy, and she's also getting buffed with one, one, and impact. So Lost Chapter works out incredibly well. I would always pick it up if you have it. Now for your rare relic, again, I think this is probably the best in just about all situations. Crown Guard Inheritance when I level up Rally. So Nidalee, you're actually able to level her up normally in the second round, but sometimes you can even do it in the first round. And so when she levels up, she's going to go to the Pack Mother, getting those extra stats as well as Overwhelm. But then she will rally from that Crown Guard Inheritance, and normally that rally will let you end the game. But even if it doesn't end the game, once Nidalee transforms back into her normal form, she can then work on leveling up again, getting that rally off again, and just ending the game shortly thereafter. It's an incredibly powerful effect, and I'm consistently ending games with this combination, either the first round or the second round. Highly recommend using both of these, but if for some reason you don't have them or don't want to use them, getting Chameleon's Necklace, creating two copies of me in your deck, that way you can be sure to play her round one, and then her champion spell is also decent. So Chameleon's Necklace would also be a solid pickup. For some additional rare relics, the Troll King's Crown Allies have Overwhelm. This could be decent for pushing out some extra damage. With your first attack with Nidalee, you're normally not having her transformed yet, and so you're missing out on a lot of damage because normally she gets blocked out by a weak unit. So making sure she has Overwhelm in her first form, and then also giving it to your other units, this can be quite nice to have. The Bounty Hunter's Renown, generally the best stat relic in the game, so if you want to get more stats on her, that's also a great way to go. And then Archangel Staff, Round Start, Refill Your Spell Mana. There's a lot of different spells you want to be playing, especially all of those different ambush cards, so always having spell mana works out quite well. Now, I still actually don't say that this is better than Lost Chapter. Having that on demand when you play Nidalee, that extra spell mana, is quite strong. So I'd still say this is better, and then quite often, and you're able to summon other copies of Nidalee when you're transforming her for the first time each round. That summoning the ephemeral copy will again refill your spell mana. So the Archangel Staff isn't as important, but can still be a nice benefit. And you can definitely play around with other rare relics, or relics in general, but I feel like the best combination is by far Lost Chapter, always, I don't think I'll ever get rid of this, and then Crown Guard Inheritance once you have a open rare slot that's not overriding the Lost Chapter. This is just a incredible combo. If I had a third slot, I think I would put Troll King's Crown, just to make sure I'm ending the game as fast as possible. I think Nidalee can definitely use and benefit from a lot of the other relics, but I just feel like this combination is just head and shoulders above all the rest, in my opinion. All right, let's go take a look at what powers you might want to look out for for Nidalee as well as some tips and tricks, support champions, and then we'll wrap up with our final ranking of the champion. Taking a look at powers now, first up we have Gearing Up, Game Start, Summon Two Armed Gearheads. Now really, any of the Game Start Summon units would work out quite well. For Nidalee, it's important just having units on the board that you can keep transforming, so any of them would work. The Armed Gearheads do work out the best since they have that Quick Attack and Augment and you are playing a decent amount of created cards, but any of the Game Start Summon units would be beneficial. Next we have Crush, Allies have Overwhelm, really great for helping you end the game very quickly. Domination, this is one of if not the best power in the game for Nidalee. Yes, being able to get that Rally and Attack every round is very strong, but also every time you get the Attack token, you're creating another one of your clever camouflages in hand. That's your spell to be able to transform a unit into a random one that costs two more. So just getting one of those every single round is very strong. Anytime you have the opportunity to generate more Attack tokens, whether that's through Scout or other ways to Rally, definitely pick those up. It is amazing for 
for your build. Next here we have Wild Inspiration. Your created cards cost one less. This is great. All of those ambush cards you're creating, making those all cost one less is very helpful. Spell Slinger, same thing. Your spells cost one less. You're generating a lot of spells. Making them all be a bit cheaper is very strong. And then the same for Sorcery. Round Start and Refill your spell mana. This one is actually a bit less important than the other two in my opinion since normally with Nidalee you're running that lost chapter anyways that's helping you refill your spell mana. For the last group of powers here we have Share the Bounty. When you target an ally with a single target spell, copy it onto your weakest ally. Now this is very strong for your clever camouflage. It's either going to be able to transform two units or if the one unit you cast it on is the weakest ally and they're still the weakest ally after the first transform it'll just transform again. It's just great for making all of your units into ones that are just stronger and better in most situations. And this is great for helping you level up your Nidalee as fast as possible as well. Seed of Power game starts summon a Emperor's Dais. This gives you the landmark that when you attack, you also summon a attacking Sand Soldier. Great for just pushing some extra damage early. Well, extra damage throughout the entire game. You're normally trying to end the game in the first couple rounds, so anything that can help you push that little bit of extra damage is very helpful. Then we have Duelist. When you summon an ally, give it Challenger this round. This can be great to make sure all your units are getting blocked appropriately. Like we talked in the starting deck, having Vulnerable is very strong for this deck and Challenger is essentially the same effect. Just making sure all your units are having the best trades and that any Overwhelm units you have are able to set up for the best attacks. All right, taking a look at support champions now. This isn't a exhaustive list of all the champions, just some that I've found that work out quite well and some things you maybe want to consider when looking at picking up support champions yourself. So first we have Transform. Any other units that also have transform mechanics can be quite beneficial for you since obviously that's the main focus of your deck. And then we also have summon units. Nidalee's level up is she's seen you transform or summon units. So if you're able to summon units for cheap, getting those transforms going, Nidalee can keep leveling up quite quickly. And then again, when you level up, you're getting that rally from Crown Guard in most situations. So it just helps you end the game very fast. And then the last thing to look out for, extra attacks specifically extra ways to get the attack token. So scout attacks, rally, any of those would work out quite well. So first up we have Gnar. Obviously he's the other main transform deck. So getting him as a support champion is pretty good. Then next up we have Elise. She's able to summon a lot of different units. Every time she attacks, she summons another Spiderling. And those can also just be great units for you to continually transform with your clever camouflage. And then last up we have Lucian. He's both pretty cheap, so you can play him and have him count as being summoned, but then also when he levels up he's able to generate those rallies, which can really help you close out the game. Alright, next up we have some cards to look out for. Again, this is not a exhaustive list, there's plenty of other cards that will also be beneficial. These are just some that you might want to consider, and also the reasons why you are considering them. So first here on the left we have Curious Changeling. When an allied follower transforms into another follower, transform me into an exact copy of it. So again, just further going for that transform playstyle. Next up, we have the Paka Club. <laughs> I say that every time. Paka Cub, decent card on its own, has that ambush, so it has further synergy, but then also Nexus Strike summon a protector. So the fact that this can summon more units and also can transform itself, great synergy for Nidalee as you're trying to summon more units and also transform more units. Then next up, we have the Avenging Vestaya. So this is the card I wish was in the deck. It does have that ambush synergy, but it also just has a great effect of when I transform from the Avenging Vestaya and ambush, stop all enemy fast spells, slow spells, and skills. With Path of Champions, it's pretty easy to predict if the enemy will play a spell. And so there's been many times where I'll grab this, I'll do an attack, I'll have this as its little shadow in the brush, I know that there's a pretty good chance the enemy will play a spell. They do, I'm able to transform it, stop that spell, and normally end the game. This is a really great card, definitely pick it up if you see it. Then next up we have the Black Rose Spy. Reputation, when I'm summoned, transform me into an exact copy of the strongest ally that struck this game. So it's a pretty cheap card, but it has again that transform synergy. And that's the main thing you're trying to look for, is any cards that have any transform synergy, really great to pick up. But again, remember, if it's just a cheap card that has solid items on it, it also could be decent to pick up just because you know those items can transfer over whenever you transform that card. All right, on to some 
tips and tricks that I've picked up while playing Nidalee. So first, like we've talked about, items and relics work with transform, so you don't have to worry about losing those when you're constantly changing your units into a different one. Then next up, transform multiple targets. Now what I mean by this is don't be continually transforming the same target. Quite often you can get a solid unit with a good stat line. If that happens, just keep that unit and then start transforming other targets. Since you're transforming them into random cards, sometimes you'll get a selection where all of them just have really terrible stat lines despite the fact that they're more expensive. So when that happens, you want to keep transforming those cards until you get one that has a really nice stat line for its cost. And then again, you normally want to keep that unit there and then move on to transforming another unit. And I'm obviously referring to the clever camouflage mechanic that you're generating every time you get the attack token. Don't always just keep transforming your strongest and strongest unit. That's often not the best way to end the game. Next up then we have Ambush plus Radiant Plate Armor. So Radiant Plate Armor is an item that makes your unit cost one more, but gives them 3-3 three, three for stats. This works interesting for Nidalee, it's kind of bugged right now, so if you only have two mana, you can still play the card as an ambush card for that two mana, essentially avoiding the increase you'd get from the Radiant Plate Armor. But if you have three or more mana, it will actually take three mana to play it as Shadow in the Brush. So it's slightly bugged right now, but you can abuse this at the moment to get the extra stats from Radiant Plate Armor, but still play them for the two cost in some situations. This can be great for Nidalee, since you're trying to play her in the very first round when you only have that two mana. So you can often abuse this to get the benefit without the trade-off, but just know if you have the three mana, it will actually cost that extra mana. All right, next up then, prioritize cheap units with strong relics. This ties into the first point, but again, since items and relics stay on the card. It can be very strong to just pick up in a shop if you see a terrible one cost card that normally wouldn't help you but has some really solid items on it. Might not be a bad idea to buy that and then when you play it you always just transform that into a stronger card. All right, finishing up with our rankings. So I think before you're level 20, you're an S tier champion. I think after level 20, you're again a S tier champion. The first round that I played with Nidalee when she was level one with two stars, felt like I was playing a level 20 S tier champion already. She is crazy good, really strong, and while her third star power is very powerful, even just the two stars is good enough to already feel amazing. For her region, she's in Shirima, and she is by far the best Shiriman champion. So if you're looking for a champion to pick up for those different regional quests, definitely pick up Nidalee, you'll be able to dominate, especially compared to any of the other Shurima champions. For some reasons to pick up Nidalee, hyper aggressive, you're ending the game super fast, you're very versatile, and you feel very unique in your gameplay. I find it a lot of fun. The only real reason to not pick up Nidalee is somewhat champion reliant. Now, you can normally still win games without drawing Nidalee, but she is definitely your main win condition and is super powerful. So while the deck and star power still work decent even without her, the deck is definitely much weaker if you're not able to draw her. Now it's not as bad as a lot of other champions like Yasuo or like Teemo where you might end up losing the game because you're never able to draw the champion, but your main source of power is your champion. So if you don't like that, that's kind of the one reason maybe not to pick up this deck, but in general, Nidalee is a lot of fun. I haven't had this much fun since like LeBlanc came out. She's pretty crazy, a great addition to the game, and I would highly recommend picking her up. All right, that's it for the guide. If you enjoyed it, definitely like and subscribe. Massive shout out to all my members that go that extra mile supporting the channel. If you want to be a member and support me making all these videos for you, hit that join button down below. We also just launched a Discord that's been growing amazing. If you want to join in discussion with a bunch of other Path of Champions players, click the link in the description down below. I hope to see you there, and I hope you have a great day.